Miami, we had a great opportunity, Mark, where some of our best players have early have already early enrolled in on campus. The two highest rated recruits, Francis Maui Goa and uh, Samson Okunola, are both enrolled at Miami and in Lifton. Now, Francis Maui Goa had the Polynesian Bowl, so he was like pretty. He was a week late in, uh, but of course, he's one of the best players, so he was able to. To, to catch on, right, but he's on campus, enrolled, ready to go as of Monday because the, the Polynesian Bowl was this past week over in the homeland of Hawaii. Uh, you also have Ruben Bain, a big-time edge rusher slash defense alignment from Miami Central, four-star recruit. He's on campus. Jaden Wayne, edge rusher, one of my favorite recruits uh, in this upcoming cycle. He's also on campus. Riley Williams, tight end, number four tight end in the country, just outside the, the, the 247 top 100. He's also a road. So the top five that I just spit out to you are all close to the line of scrimmage, one of the places that Miami must, must make big changes um, here. And as you can see, Mark has gotten fancy with the computer and learned how to put it up for me. So I don't have to keep going tab to tab. Okay, scroll down for me, please, Mark. Because we talked about those five. Okay. One more, one more uh down because I need to get the next five in there. And can you see one more. I can't see what you can see because I'm working oh, on it. Oh, okay. Another. So scroll a little bit a little bit lower. Right there. Okay. Can you go up a little bit? Okay, can you scroll up for me? Wait, who are you looking? And right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good job. Don't, don't step perfect right there. Right. Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph, five foot eight, 170 pounds, the lightning behind wide receiver speedster. These are the kind of young men that we were talking about before. Guys that come in maybe 10 years ago, they would be an early enrollee. Why? Because you want that young man to get into the nutrition and the strength program. You need him, if he's going to be a contributor, to be north of 180, at, if perfect, at least 190 um, by opening uh, against Bethune-Cookman to start the season. You need that. You need him to be up there because at 170 at this level, I don't, even as a blazer, I don't know if that's enough body mass to take the pound him. Uh, Collins Achiampong, six foot seven, two hundred fifty four pound defensive end, defensive you know three technique tackle guy. This is a project player, another guy who used to you know we had Ufambu Kumalu was a similar young man that came in played for Miami about eight years ago. Uh, he was one of those guys that we need to bring in. Alquadi Muhammad was one of those guys where it's just like project guy, get him on campus early, get him in the weight room. They show up at like 230. They may be north of 250 by the end of spring alone. This young man is already 250. And some people look at him as, you know, a strong side defense in. I look at him as one of the most athletic interior linemen, whether it's a four-eye technique or a three technique. I think he just really eat things up at that level. Again, guys close to the LOS. Up next, Malik Bryant, inside linebacker slash 3-4 edge rusher if Miami does convert to the 34. Another young man. The big importance about getting certain positions in, quarterback, free safety, center, middle linebacker, what are these position guys? These are cerebral positions. You want these young men in there so that they can learn the system, be able to regurgitate the system on your scout team, on your third team, on your second team, where they can spit it out, make the calls as true Mike linebackers, centers, quarterbacks, and free safeties because they control what happens on the football field and how they can influence other players based on their calls. So it's great to get your linebacker in there because he can do what? Get those calls right. All right, Mark Cannon. Went. Okay, perfect. Robbie and Bobby Williams, the twins, one wide receiver, one linebacker. Again, 5'10", 185. I mean, this young man, Robbie Williams, is – I keep saying Williams. Washington. Robbie and Bobby Washington. Mark, I did an hour and a half breakdown. Two hours. And I kept saying Robbie and Bobby Williams. I apologize to them and their family. I don't like getting people's names wrong. But anyway, the Washington twins. 
Let me tell you, Robbie Washington is more like your Steve Smith. I mean, he is a, a bully. Okay. I could see him easily being on some Xavier Restrepo 200 pound slot kind of guy. That's the way he plays. Now, Bobby, whew, my unsung athlete, six foot three, 215. Get him at 230, 220, 225, so in there. Long, wiry frame, physical, physical, physical. I think it contribute if we continue with the 425. Look, he could be a Mike. If we switch to the 3 4, he could be a strong side outside linebacker. Very good at the point of attack. Also, another linebacker as far as making the calls. What's one of the other positions we talked about? Quarterback. Our lone quarterback signing, Emery Williams, uh, is also enrolled and on campus. So now we're drifting into a couple of the project guys. We saw some of those elite guys at the top, some of those four stars in the middle. And now the bottom 15, the bottom five or six, because we, we we enrolled 15, the bottom five, we're getting into those guys where everything is super important to them. Every single rep is important. Every single um, snap is important. Every single meeting, because they are the ones that are, quote, unquote, lower recruits. They need all those things to catch up and to really be on par and to really help contribute if you want them to contribute for you in 2023. So it's great. Um, it's, it's, it's great to see guys like Jackson Carver, very physical blocking tight end uh, in there. Antonio Tripp, okay, interior offensive lineman, center prospect. Caleb Spencer, your outside linebacker, strong safety prospect. And then the lone punter, special teamer that we signed, Dylan Joyce, is there also. Uh, so, so these things are really big, man, and I, and I love the fact that we got a solid 15 out of, um, you know, we got 15 that we signed, 10, 15 enrolled. The other 10 uh, signed letters of intent. Now, some of these guys I would have loved to have seen. For me, I would take all 20, all 25 could be early enrollees for me. But another thing that comes into a situation, you see some private schools on here. Private schools have their own set of ordeals. St. Thomas Aquinas, American Heritage, uh, Pace, Antioch over in California. These places have their where you must finish through because there is a religious course or some course that you must take that's only available in your summer, spring semester. So young men uh, have to stay and make sure that they complete those courses Think back to Brad Kaya not being an early enrollee. Why? Because he was a private school young man from California. They didn't allow him uh, to early enroll and enrollee. Sam Bruce, uh, God bless him, bless his soul, from St. Thomas Aquinas, did not get a chance to early enrollee because he played at St. Thomas Aquinas. Michael Irvin II. Okay, so those are examples of private schools that forced him to stay back. Bishop Gorman, things of that nature, uh, when it comes to the religious aspects. So, it, it really piles up, Mark. You get a chance to get year after year after year, class after class after class. Think about that, Mark. That's an extra six months of lifting, weight training, learning the scheme, nutrition, that you get a head start on. And if you start to do that with your best players over and over and over and over and over, years down the line, you know, that's that's what some of these St. Uh, I almost said St. Thomas, Georgia, Bama, where they just got guys that are red shirt freshmen that you're seeing out there, and there's no big drop off. You see, Georgia puts their second team out here, you know, of guys, and then whoa, man, what? he's he's 19. You sure? <laughs> it's because these young men get a chance to get into these programs, they get to lift. They get to play with confidence because they know that they know that they know that they have been prepared. And early enrollment is is uh, something that really helps with that. Yeah, 15 is a uh, really good number. I'm just going to throw Bama in there. And uh, let's see what we got. Again, I, I think that for these top, top, top programs that um, – that the numbers used to be a lot more than everybody else, but you know, Bama's number is 24 early enrollees. You got 24 early enrollees, 24. That's beautiful. That's they only I, have Mark, four. That's how you do it. Signed letters of intent left. 
That's how you do it. Wow. You get them in. But you, the other thing is you can't just create scholarships out of thin air. So they're putting so many people into the NFL or early enroll in, in, in early entries to the NFL draft that now they have open spots. They have transfers out, which has open spots for scholarships, which you can bring in more people. You can sign more than the allotted 25 because of that. Uh, so, I mean, they have a, they have a great system. And if you were to look back, I don't know if it will allow you to see, but maybe class of 2022, they probably still had 20 early enrollees then too. They probably had 20 early enrollees in 21. Yeah. That's how it is done. Yeah, Georgia's got 18. So with those 18, Georgia only has another seven that are going to come in later. Mm -hmm. And again, that's just how it – it's how it works. It's how that you, you get things really going uh, again for your young men.